When you first come to the con and first experience this new world, this new set of rules, it's just astounding and really um, very confusing and confronting. Just as a student walking through the conservatorium every day, we're constantly surrounded by various musical streams within the ecosystems we've called it, of the conservatorium. We just wanted to blend it together and see what came out of, yeah, portraying the various journeys of sound that we are exposed to every day. We want to take all these bits of music which are all bouncing into each other and then from that divine some sort of coherence or unison. We've grown accustomed to it now, but in the first few months we found it extremely intriguing how there would be musicians everywhere around the campus at lunchtime, trying to find a quiet spot to practice. There's always so much lovely noise going around. Suddenly we'd outgrown that high school band sound, which obviously lacked dedication, and oboes actually started sounding like oboes. With Wide Eyed at the Con, we've taken this notion of found sound and given it a place. Musical streams you'd hear from various indiv individual spaces have been transformed into their own sound identities, yet have been modified to coherently mix with everything else. We began our journey by walking around the conservatorium and recording snippets of sound with the Zoom H4N. We have a variety of source sounds ranging from traditional musical instruments, ensemble sounds and general sounds such as tonal air through vents and the theatre warning bell. In terms of achieving various senses of space, dimension and depth throughout these sonic streams, we aim to implement this critical element of source recording to emphasise the breadth of our creative decisions and to emphasise the broad ideas within our project. Um, it's Greg Doorknot and asked musicians to play him a clean ascending and descending concert scale with performance articulation variations. I waited as my Zoom was placed in the interior of a practice room piano for three hours and captured the sounds of various musicians rehearsing without their consent. This was a bit morally concerning, but the sounds were going to be pulled apart and unassociated from their original sounds as much as possible anyway. For the next few stages we played with the sounds individually in post-production and creatively applied reverbs, delays and amplification simulators to either strengthen the sounds from their original sources or amalgamate the sounds from the spaces they were recorded in and therefore focus on the spaces. This was also a chance to chop up the sounds entirely in a spectral dimension and discover various little paths about those sounds we had not yet been exposed to. We then presented these ideas in a linear song format to four musicians who registered their interest in the project and recorded their responses in the conservatorium recording studio, therefore still abiding by the theme of Inside the Con. Yeah, really, mate, it's whatever you want to do. Yeah, cool. Yeah. No. My face hurts. <laughs>
could do a hectic section where it's just trying to do noise, and then if you want to use it, then you can do that. But just like at the peak of it, I'll just go. semitone thing is just playing a solid tone and then singing intervals above it. The result was an improvised blend of dissonant and consonant sounds, either strengthening perceptions of artistic sound or as organised music. We challenged our decisions in the studio to be creative and we constantly pushed our knowledge boundaries by trying new things. For example, different microphone placements. This sometimes worked and sometimes didn't, but it was the exploration and trial that made it worthwhile. Then it was back to the studio for more post-production to blend everything together. The outcome of this in terms of making an art piece constantly develop was extremely exciting and really, really rewarding. Last stage was the mixing process. We narrowed down the composition to two sorts of sound banks, so blanket and discrete sounds. This allowed us to choose which sounds we would place in a 5.1 speaker array with the four auxiliary reverbs between the far side speakers, and also which sounds we could isolate to move around the installation space of an 18 speaker array. We did a lot of automating of panning, um, moving one object from one side of the room to the other, or moving them uh, really smoothly around the room, following the layout of the speaker array. Um, another thing that we played with was the size of the diffusion of each uh, channel, so each individual sound. Um, so as a certain sound was being passed around the room in 3D space. It was also being, the level of diffusion was also being increased or decreased and it would just move around the room like a, a jellyfish of sound, I suppose you could call it. It was um, 
it was great to be able to mix it in such a responsive room where you could immerse yourself in this music that we created. It's been really rewarding to see something that we've built from the ground up come to life. I really can't wait until we can share this with other people who have never experienced surround sounds like this before.